Oh my gosh, there is some mainstream goofiness going on in our skyways and byways. Balloons getting blown up and people wondering if it's aliens or the Chinese or who knows what. Well, today I'm going to talk to you about one aspect of balloons that is near and dear to my heart as an amateur radio operator, ham radio balloons. That's right. We put little radios, usually, seriously, little tiny radios, on the end of helium balloons and we send them way up in the air. So for a couple of weeks now, the entire country has been embroiled by this discussion of where are all these balloons coming from, why are these balloons even in the airspace, and who put them there. Going so far as there there be consideration that some of them were put there by aliens, extraterrestrials, we now call them UAPs instead of UF UFOs, who knew? I kind of learned about that recently. That is true. All of that is possible. I'm not even going to touch on any of that, right? I don't care if it's the Chinese or whatever. And 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 by and large, that that Chinese balloon, that thing um, had like a bus, the the length of a bus underneath it. That boom was massive. So the balloon that was holding it up would have just been huge. But that doesn't mean that there aren't other balloons out there. We obviously know about weather balloons that are put up by weather agencies to track you know, how the balloon goes along. But amateur radio operators, we also put balloons up. And one of them, I think, just got shot down, right? That was the other news story that hit the airs this week. So I wanted to talk a little bit about what they are. Put in the most simplest sense, obviously a balloon can't have a human being. I mean, it can, but not the ones we're putting up. It doesn't have a human being to respond, so what they generally are is beaconing stations, as we call them. We put a little radio on board of a balloon, we code our call sign into it, and it squawks out usually one of two things. It will do APRS, which is Automatic Packet Reporting System, or Whisper, which is Weak Signal Propagation Reporter. Reporter. That is just basically giving you the information of like a GPS location of where that balloon's at at the time, elevation, speed, that kind of stuff. We APRS transmitters in general provide that kind of information. And a lot of times those packets then get picked up and placed on the internet. You can actually track stuff like that on APRS.FI and there's other websites you can use specifically to track amateur radio balloons. Whisper, on the other hand, uh, that has use cases for like HF radio propagation, which is kind of cool because you can be at home and you could pick up a whisk whisper beacon of a balloon that's many, many, many miles away. And that also goes online in the form of a website that could pick up that data uh, called PSK Reporter. And again, there's other websites that track balloons, and I'll link those in the description. The reason we do this is because we can, and it's fun to see our balloon, in some cases, circumnavigate the globe multiple times. There is a channel on YouTube. I will link him as well. His name is Tom Medland. His call sign is W5KUB. I will link that in the description as well. And again, these are tiny little transmitters, oftentimes microwatts of output power, but at that height, it's actually really easy for them to get their signals out. For just a bit of background, APRS in the form of these transmitters are generally going to be in the two meter frequency space. So if it is flying overhead and a good hundred miles in either direction, you could potentially pick it up from your home station. The whisper beacons, on the other hand, they're actually uh, beyond line of sight capable oftentimes. And so you are able to get them much, much further away to the tune of a thousand miles or more, even at a microwatt. Not often, but it does happen. Now, the thing to note here is that these balloon launches that amateurs put up do have approval from the FAA to do what they're doing. They are allowed to put them up. There is a process that you go through to actually put a balloon into space as an amateur radio operator. So they are legally allowed to be there. What makes it a bit funky for people, though, is that most of them do not have ADSB transmitters. An ADSB transmitter is something that you might get on an airplane. Think of this whole business with tracking Elon Musk private jets and whatnot using ADSB exchange. ADSB transmitters are much, much larger than we could, as hams, put into our tiny little Pico balloons, so they often don't squawk that out. They're purely transmitting on amateur radio frequencies, which the military and other government officials likely have no concept of. So when they see something that looks like a balloon from China, although much smaller, they get all antsy in the pantsy and they just shoot it down with Sidewinder missiles. 
big cost to the taxpayers. Now these balloons are kind of interesting because they go to the pretty much the highest levels of our atmosphere in some cases. Sometimes they ride much lower. And while they may look small on the ground, what happens with helium being contained in something like a balloon, whether it is mylar or something more like latex or whatnot, or actually they call them sushi wrapper uh, balloons in some cases, they expand a great deal. So when they actually get to higher altitudes, they look much, much bigger, or they're physically much, much bigger than they are in the ground. So that's possibly why it shows up on some radars, or now because of the zeitgeist of people freaking out about balloons, we're seeing a lot of traffic on ham radio balloons potentially being one of the items that people are going to be looking for in our governments. Now, if you, if you superimpose the image of the Chinese balloon, and I'm calling it the Chinese balloon, it may not be, I don't care, we're gonna use that for simplicity, versus a ham radio balloon, you'll see some similarities. Oftentimes, they're just big, round, white balloons. No identifying markings aside from this joke meme that says Baofeng on the side. That's one of the issues that I'm seeing with the amateur radio balloons, and some comments that we've received is, wouldn't it be nice if we put like a call sign on the side of it, or something that said ham radio, or et cetera, et cetera. The problem is, is going back to my previous example, previous explanation, that these things get much, much bigger. You'd basically have to like blow it up to full size, write your call sign on it, and then let it shrink back down and then fill it up with X amount of helium for the load that you're going to carry. So that's not exactly feasible. And if you wrote your call sign when it was small, that doesn't really translate either. So I guess you're gonna have to put the, uh, the ink on there after you fill it with helium problem there is once it gets to higher altitude, it's going to expand even more, and that's going to create its own issue. The Mylar ones are probably going to be fine, so maybe that's the route to go. I guess the point of this video is one, to explain, hey, uh, don't freak out about ham radio balloons. They're often the much, much smaller guys with the tiny little payload, which is just an RF transmitter. It receives no signals. We're not doing signals intelligence or anything like that with amateur radio. It's purely just for the fun of seeing where our signals can go. Two, if you find this interesting, an amateur radio balloon can be put up in the air by any technician. Technician is the first and lowest level of amateur radio licensing here in the United States. So if you're interested in that, I'll have a couple of other links in the description that you can learn more about our really interesting hobby. We also have satellite transmissions, moon bounce transmissions, where we're literally bouncing RF off of the moon, among many, many other cool little hobby areas that use radio frequency technology. So maybe you find this interesting or the thought sounds like a hobby that you might enjoy, consider subscribing to my channel. Give me a thumbs up if this was helpful to you. Check out my videos below on a playlist for how to get started in amateur radio. And I, uh, I hope to hear you on the airwaves soon. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. Thanks for watching, 73.